speaks to you. And the Bible said, Jesus said, no man cometh unto me. Except the Father do what? Draw him. And God knows how to deal with each and everyone's heart. God knows how to deal with your heart. You know when God is dealing with you. You know how sometimes you might say, I just feel like I got to go. Something is telling me to go. Something is telling me to go down to that church. It's something I've got to get there. That's God dealing with you, telling you to go. Sometimes the Lord will tell you not to go somewhere. But you want to go anyway. See, God has a purpose for each and every individual. Amen. And you have to find out what, what is God's purpose for my life. And the pastor was teaching on Wednesday night about the prophet Balaam and the king of Moab, Balak. And Balak wanted Balaam to curse the people of God. And he said, how can I curse what God has blessed? You know, God, you know, the devil can't do no more to you than what God allows him to do. Remember when God spoke to the devil, he said, have you considered my servant, Job? He said, there's none like him. He said, I can't get to him because you got a hedge around him. Take the head from around him, I'll make him curse you to your face. He said, touch everything he got, but don't touch his life. Specific. Job lost everything he had. Everything. Lost his children, lost his home, lost his possessions, all his flock. But he held on to his integrity and he held on to his trust in God. What are you going through today? God know what you're going through. Sometimes you feel like you're the only one. God knows what you're going through. Job held on to his integrity. And he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And God wants us to continue to trust him. No matter what. Or in spite of what you're going through, there's nothing that he can't take care of. There's nothing that God can't handle. But he wants us to trust him. That's why he can't let you have it so easy. Because you will take the credit for it. See, that's why the children of Israel didn't come out so easy. See, now, Pharaoh couldn't let them go. God sent Moses down there. He said, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Pharaoh couldn't let them go. Because the Bible said God did what? Harden his heart. And when all of those miracles and all of those plagues and things took place, and the death angel went through the camp of Egypt, and Pharaoh put them out of there, and when they come out of Egypt, this is what God told them. God said, I am the God that brought you out of Egypt. And if he had let them go another way, then they wouldn't have understood it. That was the hand of God that brought them out. And so that's why God let you go through the things that you go through so he can prove to you. If I let you get in it, I can bring you out. If you got yourself in it, I can get you out of it. There's nothing that God can't handle. And somebody in here today need to be encouraged not to throw in the towel, not to give up. Because you're not the only one. And not only that, God is concerned about you. He know what you're going through. Now, in this chapter, it talks about the hireling, the hired shepherd. And all the hired one is concerned about is getting the money. But see, the good shepherd is concerned about his sheep. The Bible said, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall do what? Save his people from their sin. God come to save us. He come to get us out. 
And he said, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. God never intend for man to stay in sin. God come to get us out of sin. The Bible said the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. See, the devil will offer you something that look good and smell good and taste good. Amen. And feel good, but it's not good for you. The Bible said the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil want to take you out. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. So he wants us to live. But he can't, he, he couldn't let you go the easy way. He got to let you go the way so you know that it was him that brought you out. That's why the song said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I know it's him that brought me out. Hallelujah to God. I'm the good shepherd in verse 11. And the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a howling and not the shepherd who's owned the sheep or not. See if the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth them the sheep. You see, amen, you see when the wolf come. When trouble come, when bad times come, when tough times come, the howling, amen, he going to flee and leave the sheep. But I heard the Lord say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, but I'll be with you always until the end of time. Brothers and sisters, you don't have to worry about God leaving you. Amen. That man might leave you. That woman might leave you. That friend might leave you, but Jesus will never leave you. Hallelujah to God. He'll let you go through. But you know the good thing about it? He'll go through with you. Ah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. God allowed them to be put in the fire. And God will allow you and I to be put in the fire. Amen. And when he put those three Hebrew boys in the fire, the Bible said, Amen, nothing, amen, nothing but the cords that they had tied the Hebrew boys up with burned. That's the only thing that burned is the cord that had wrapped around them. And when they come out, they didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't have no type of fire on them because God was with them in the fire. And he said, I'll be with you even until the end where God will be with you right what you're going through. He wants you to put your trust in him. And God letting somebody know, I'm right there with you. I ain't never left you. But I want you to trust me. And then we, the pastor was talking the other day about asking, asking. He said, what's the use of asking God for if you ain't going to have no faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The Bible said, for by it the elders received the what? Good report. I want a good report. God wants his people to have some faith. And the Bible said faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. When you hear the word, you can have some faith. Because it's faith that moves God. And the Bible said that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But faith pleases God. That centurion said, Lord, I'm not even worthy that you come into my house. He said, he said, but if you just speak the word, I believe that my child will be here. And he said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. It's faith. God moves. That's what moves God is faith. And he goes on, he said, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. And I'm known of mine. God know you. God know who you are. Even those that are in here today, if you're not saved, God know who you are. That's why you're here today, because he wants you to get saved. He, amen. He come to save you. Amen. This is the body. This is the church. Amen. The place we come to congregate. This is 
the place that we come to hear the word of God. This is the place we come to receive help for the problems that we have. This is the place that we come that we can repent at, our, at an altar, an altar of repentance. This is a place that we can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus. And this is a place where we can be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Amen. This is a saving station. Amen. Whatever problem you have. I know you're sick. I know you've been afflicted. But the Bible said that with his stripes, we heal. There is a balm in Gilead. A balm is a medicine. And Jesus is my medicine. Oh, my Lord. He's the good shepherd. And the good shepherd careth for the sheep and he give his life for the sheep. Look at verse number 15 of St. John 10. He said, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. He's going to bring the Gentiles in too. And that's what he did, amen, when Peter went down to the house of Cornelius. And Peter began to preach Jesus. And the Bible said, while they, Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. And Peter said unto them, he said, can any man forbid water that have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. It's going to be one, there's only one shepherd. Only one shepherd. And he said there's only one fold and one shepherd. It ain't but one church, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what name is on the church. I don't care, amen, what denomination they call it. God don't have but one church. And that's the body of Christ. The Bible said one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. It ain't but one way in. And you got to go in through the door. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. Pasture means food. Amen. Food for your soul. Amen. The word of God is the food for our soul. The word of God is what gives us strength. The word of God is what helps us to get through here. No man taking my life. And I'm about to get out of here. No man taketh it. Look here in verse 18. He said, no man taketh it. Let me get 17. Therefore doth my father love me because I laid down my life that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Jesus said no man take his life. He said I lay it down for you. He said I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. Amen. Who has amen. Who, who can do this but God. Amen. And then we go on and we look at the uh, uh, remainder of this chapter here and I'm going to skip to verse 29 and read on down and I'm going to get out of your way. He said my father which gave them is greater than all. Now, verse number 28, he said, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You see, he goes on here, and let me bounce back to 25. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not in the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. 26, but you believe not because you are not my sheep, as I said unto you. For 27, he said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Is God speaking to you today? He said, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Saints, you don't have to worry about it. Can't nobody pluck you out of God's hand. 
My God, he sealed us with the Holy Ghost. And we are sealed until the day of redemption. All we have to do is walk in the light as he's in the light. And the Bible says the blood of Jesus, it cleanses us from all sin. All we have to do is continue in God's word. He said, if you continue in my word, he said, and you are my disciples indeed. And so what we have to do is continue, amen, to walk in the word of God. Amen. As we see it, we walk in it. You see, and we are held responsible for what we know. Amen. When it comes to you and God open your understanding, God hold you responsible. And so we have to walk in his word. We have to walk in what God tells us to, to walk in. And if we stay there, we have eternal life. Hallelujah. We'll live forever. But you got to stay there. You got to stay in the word. Stay in the word until Jesus comes. Stay in the word until you finish your course. See, Paul said, I fought a good fight. He said, I kept the faith. Amen. He said, I finished my course. And see, you can't leave here until you finish your course. Amen. I want to finish my course. Hallelujah to God. All of us have a course. Amen. That we have to travel. A course that we have to go on and that we have to go through. And God has one in God for you and me. And I want to finish my course. Amen. Every, each and every one of us has a destiny. And God has a destiny for you and I. And you got to find out what it is that God has for you. And you you got to get in that, and you got to work in that, and you got to stay in that. It's a fight. And that's why the Bible said, fight the good fight of faith, that you may lay hold on eternal life. You got to fight to get in here. You got to fight to stay in here. You got to fight to get it, and you got to fight to keep it. I'm going to tell you why you got to fight. Because that flesh you got is nothing but grass. And the Bible said the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary one to the other. And as long as you're in the flesh, you're going to have something to fight. The Bible said walk in the spirit that you fulfill not the lust of the flesh. The flesh is full of lust. And you got to keep it under control by walking in the spirit. By fasting and praying. And Paul said I've Bring my body unto subjection. It don't want to do it, but I got to make it do it through the help of God. And Peter said, kept by the power of God. You can't do it without the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost comes speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit of God give the utterance. Not a catfish tongue. But the Holy Ghost speaking. As the, the Bible says, God give the utterance. God will take your tongue and speak. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, God going to take your tongue and speak. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. And they shall do what? Speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it would not harm them. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so, in verse 29, nobody, 28, he said, nobody be able to pluck them out of my hand. Nobody. God would never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But you know what people do? They walk away from God. But let me tell you something. You can't get away. When you come to the Lord, you got to give up some stuff. You can't give it up on your own. You got to come give your life to the Lord. He'll help you give it up. I had a good preacher of mine told me, he said that, he said, he thought, he said, if I didn't get a drink, I thought I was going to die. One of my good preacher friends is saved now. He said, but when he went to church, he had been drinking that morning. And he said, when the Lord saved him, he said, that was it. I was done. I didn't need it no more. Because the Lord gave me some new wine. He said, he gave me that wine. Hallelujah to God. He gave me that, that, that well of water that springeth up into everlasting life. Yes, sir. And look here what he say here. In verse 29, my father which gave it them, 
is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Jesus said, 